Hello and welcome and today I'm doing the long awaited tutorial to Azure Lane. I'm picking a random server so that we can do the tutorial map as well as the whole of World Watman from the new perspective and that will allow the game to hold our hand. The great thing about this game is it does instruct you to what you need to do. So even if you can't read anything, it will tell you exactly what to do and show you what you need to do to play the game. Okay, here we have HMS Suffolk and HMS Norfolk. These two heavy cruisers are county class cruisers. They were involved in the hunt for the Bismarck, or the initial hunt for the Bismarck, as she broke out of her dockyard and went or tried to break into the Atlantic. So they tracked her through the Denmark Strait and they followed her using their radar. So they were able to shadow her for quite some distance. Right, it's telling us there to use torpedoes. So we now have the ability to use our torpedoes. So there's Prince Jorgen. So she was the ship, the heavy cruiser that accompanied Bismarck as uh, she made her escape. And here's HMS Hood, the fleet that uh, encountered the Bismarck and Jorgen after being told where they were and chasing to catch up. The nice thing about this is that we've got them engaging Jorgen first because when they did first engage Bismarck and Prince Jorgen the aim was to target Bismarck but because Prince Jorgen was leading the formation had mistakenly identified Prince Jorgen as Bismarck and opened fire did target and open fire on Jorgen. But then Prince of Wales had correctly identified Bismarck and was firing on Bismarck. And so at that point, Hood was then able to switch from Bismarck onto Jorgen. And there's Bismarck there. Of course, the other ship was Prince of Wales. Okay, so we're now firing our main cannons. That's what that little aiming target is all about. So it does tell you to do that, but if you hold the button, it does allow you to drag the aiming circle over them. It's like if you hold down on torpedoes, you get this uh, nice little line which will tell you where one of the torpedoes will go, but they do then fan out from there. So, Bismarck has a lot of health, but here comes the main fatal shot right now, and there goes Hood. So as an opening tutorial, this is really well crafted. It's nice because it's got the history there. And I know the heavy cruisers weren't involved in the fighting, but they were there involved in the shadowing of the Bismarck. These are the alien ships that um, is part of Azure Lane's weird world building lore thing. Um, there's something about them recreating the ships, bringing them back and things, and internal, an eternal war and things. Okay, so those were our three starter ships. We've got Javelin, who has got good torpedoes and evasion, as you see there. 
We've got USS Laffey, which is a really good all-rounder ship. And we've got Z-23, which has got really good cannons, decent torpedoes, and also really good evasions. The strange thing is, it's not historically accurate at all, because the Z-class destroyers were pretty much overpowered by the other destroyers. They just didn't have as many main cannons. Um, the J-class destroyers had more of the same type of cannons as the German destroyers. So they had the same caliber guns, but they had them in twin turrets. And as such, it made them more powerful. They had three twin turrets, whereas the German destroyers had two, no, four single turrets. At the moment, we're choosing our name for our, well, it's your Admiral Fleet name. So, put in whatever name you want. If it's not in use on the server, you can have it. It's now directing us to rebuild a ship. As I said, it really does hold your hand. So, you can't click anywhere other than it's telling you to click. So now we've got USS Thatcher. So it's going to exit out of that, go into formation, and then add the Thatcher into the formation. Or rather, we will when it lets us. As I said, it holds your hand, but because it, it's trying to explain things, and if you can't read it, it doesn't mean anything to you. It just gets a bit frustrating because you'd like click click try and get through it and stuff okay it's sending us into world the first world and the first map so in we go so there's our first uh, node on the map that we're going to have to try and go for when it lets us go for it but now we've got a random Fleet encounter, it's going to tell us to try to avoid it, but unfortunately, we weren't able to not enter the random node. So, this is a battle that we could have avoided, but weren't able to avoid. So, fortunately, it's not that hard because it's the first map. And so even though we're level 1, we can deal with it. We're now level 2 on our fleet. And it's telling us to withdraw. We could have continued, but it's saying nope. It wants us to go into our tasks, because we've just completed our first uh, battle. And that's our rewards. It wants us to claim our equipment reward. From our plot box, this is purely random. And from design, it's given us the stuff we need so we can get a torpedo tube. It's telling us again to get our rewards. And in we go with Laffy. It's now telling us to go into equipment. There are two ways that you can actually add equipment. So this is probably the simplest way if you don't want to mess around too much because it will always take you to that screen if you want it. Um, that last bit there was to strengthen the torpedo because not only can you strengthen your ships, you can strengthen the equipment if you have the require pieces. So yeah, we've just done some more crafting for a heavy ship and we've now got ourselves a heavy cruiser. It's the HMS Kent.
and Kent, as you know, is another county class cruiser. So here we go, random encounter again, try to avoid it. Successfully avoided entering it, so now we're on to the main map. Well, the main node rather. And let's have a go at doing this. Very quick, very easy, because uh, now we're a little bit more powerful and we've got three ships rather than just the two. And we've also now got a heavy cruiser, which makes things a lot easier. On to the boss. Now, you would think at this point, because we've just encountered Bismarck and she's just in the hood, that uh, logically we'd now be looking to chase down Bismarck and sink Bismarck. However, this is not actually the case. Um, Probably because if they were to do that, they'd do another tutorial map. Here we actually have the USS Hornet as our boss. The Hornet, I believe, was involved in various little... Um, well, they were calling them fleet problems at the time. It was an exercise to say what would work with our fleets going forward. Um, so before the US decided to enter the Second World War. It was um, doing all of these little kind of things called fleet problems, just kind of like uh, mock battles and stuff. And the whole point of it was to try to insert carriers into their main navy. Because at the time, carriers were still relatively new and they weren't entirely sure of how to use them. And they weren't too sure at the time of the effectiveness of carriers or how to counter them and the fleet problems turned around and said well the answer to the fleet problem was actually no carriers are really powerful and really effective Okay, we've just got HMS Repulse as a nice little reward. Let's do a bit of crafting. We've got uh, cubes and things, and because there's an event going on, we can do the limited time crafting. So, yeah, let's go for it. And we've just got one of the special event ships, Milwaukee. And what have we got here? We seem to have another, uh, yep, it's Huga, another special event only ship. So, yeah, straight away, um, we've got two new event only limited time ships. So, not bad going. Right, this is our special limited time rewards that you can get. That's the first purchase reward that you get. It's an aircraft area and other things. Those were your level rewards. Um, these are your login rewards for the very first week. So it incentivizes you to log in every single day for the first week. And on the second day, if you had looked, you would get a new ship, and that's actually the USS Indianapolis, so that's good. Okay, we're on the Academy, and here we can actually upgrade our ability to get money and oil. So it's always worth upgrading them whenever you get the chance to. You usually get the chance to upgrade them when you level up. At first it's every few levels and then it becomes something like every 10 levels. So just putting in the new battleships 
I'll be honest, I really should have put in no Waki at this point, but I totally forgot to do that. So anyway, on to map 2. Okay, we all know what this scene is, and this is what the actual world is all about. And you've got the USS Pennsylvania there, and she's got the USS Arizona. And yep, Tears of Fells, I'll have her. This is how you know it's a Chinese game and not a Japanese game because uh, I don't think a Japanese game would be wanting to put in Pearl Harbor at this point. Um, well, Kansai Collection did do a Pearl Harbor type event, but they did it in the way that didn't upset people or try to avoid upsetting people but uh, here they're very much casting it as uh, the attack is a bit of an outrage I should have mentioned that that question box it the square with the question mark, it's basically a random chance of whatever you can get there. So, as you saw, I did get money from going into it, but you can get things like drop boxes, you can get things like um, repair abilities. So, on a map, you can just automatically repair, and you can also get extra ammo. Um, you can't exceed your maximum ammo limit, but if you've already used up ammo on the map, it will top up your ammo by one. So, in we go, onto the boss node. And here we are, they're hiding the identity of that uh, Japanese heavy cruiser, obviously, but uh, we can tell exactly it is a heavy cruiser, and on the design it's Japanese. I can't remember exactly which heavy cruiser that's supposed to be. I don't know if you missed with the torpedo south or it would go up, but uh, still went down pretty easily. So obviously you've probably noticed that I am talking about other things besides what I'm up to here. So we're getting out of the woods. And as I said, generally you'll be playing this. It's very intuitive. So you don't really need me going on telling you exactly what to do. Because the game will do that. 
for you. <laughs> It'll tell you what to do to the point that it's really annoying. I will, I'm here basically to give you little bits of extra information. So, we've got a duplicate ship. I can get rid of all the extra equipment there. I'm looking to see whether I've got a better gun that I can put in for Milwaukee. No, I don't. I don't have a spare AA gun either. I know I don't have any supplemental equipment. The nice thing about Azure Lane is that each equipment slot will take a specific type of equipment. Um, like Thatcher here, because she's a destroyer, the first slot is going to be a gun, then the second slot is going to be a torpedo, and the third slot is going to be the AA gun. And then the last two slots are your miscellaneous type equipments. So that's things like uh, torpedo bulges um, or other health equipment like uh, fire extinguishers or toolboxes. Um, you get a whole bunch of select equipment like um, radars. There's a whole load of equipment, but it's so diverse that I'm not going to be able to cover it just in this short video. So, because I realised that I hadn't put my work in, I'm going to put her in now. I'm going to put her in the middle slot, because the middle slot is really well defended. So her being level 1 is not going to matter too much as she shouldn't get too much damage there. If she was in the first slot she would get, be getting a bunch of the attacks. If she was in the last slot she'd still be getting quite a bit of the damage but not as much as in the first slot. But in the middle slot she'd be getting far less. So we can put her in there and take her into map 3. Because these maps are still fairly simple, it doesn't matter that much that I'm taking in the level 1 ship. Otherwise, I wouldn't really recommend doing it. So, as you see, at the end of it, she's leveled up rather quickly, so she's already level 2 in a bit, but we saw when we get to level 2 after the first node on the first map, but she's also taken only a small amount of damage, so rather than really kind of like obstructing the experience growth of the other ships by just repeating the world war well map one it's a risk I'm really willing to take here so again we're now up to that level three and there's another question mark box so We'll see what kind of random reward we get this time, and there's the instant repair. We're going to use it at this point because we've only got the boss to go. And unfortunately we're then hit by an airstrike which uh, then does a small amount of damage to us. The instant repair doesn't repair your ship fully, it only gives you a small amount of health back. But before you go into a node, you also have the option to use it there. So I could have saved it until going into the boss map but sometimes you can get kind of like blindsided by it and you just kind of like want to want to go straight into the map. So you get so focused on that you forget to use the instant repair so sometimes if you kind of like looking at it and you've got it there and you're saying yeah, I've not got much to go use it there and then. 
rather than forget about it and waste it because it does not carry over into other maps it only is used on that one map okay so we've got another Japanese ship identity hidden it's actually the battleship Harana She went down rather easily. So yeah, the whole thing is that at this stage it is rather easy. The thing to watch is that uh, your ships are going to be rather fragile so you want to be careful about taking too much damage. So yeah, we're getting a whole load more cubes here, so that's giving us a whole load more options for crafting, but we don't seem to have that much in uh, gold at the moment, so we probably can't craft anything for a while. So I've got a torpedo tube, I forgot I had a torpedo tube, but I can use it to equip on Kent because she doesn't have any extra torpedoes now technically I could put the torpedoes from one of the ships I'm not using onto Kent like this one but I don't want to really mess around with the ships at this point simply because later on I'm going to be upgrading the equipment anyway and once you start figuring out what your fleet is going to be and which are at a higher level and you get better equipment things will be changing rather quickly and because I've already got an extra fighter I'm trying an extra plane. I'm trying to see whether I could get it into one of the slots, but it's not actually the right plane for one of those slots on Long Island. So that's all I can do with for the equipment for now. As you can see, uh, the forces are better than Huga. I do have some crop boxes, I could open them all and get some more equipment, but it's going to be really low level equipment. The option is to save up five boxes of that level and then make them into one blue box and then I can either save up five of those and turn them into a purple box or I could open them at that point if I was really wanting to get extra equipment okay so on this map we've got ourselves an ammo resupply So we're going to the first node and then we'll talk about the ammo we supply. The ammo we supply works in the same way as the square with the question mark. Oh, we've got some explosive ships here. Those ships are packed full of explosives. If they hit your ship, it will cause a lot of damage to your ship. If they go all the way to the far end of the map, it will cause damage to your back fleet. So your front fleet needs to try and take out those ships, otherwise it's going to start causing damage to your main support fleet. 
well. I suppose it's technically your main fleet and this is your escort fleet that's up front. So it all depends how you want to term it. But the explosive ships you need to pretty much take out so that they don't cause you too much trouble later on. But as I was saying, the ammo resupply is very much like the squares that have got a question mark in them. You go into the actual square on the map, and rather than getting a random item, it just tops up the ammo on your fleet. So as you've used up ammo, because you start off with five ammo on your fleet, it will then top it up up to a maximum of three. So here we go, we're going to go into it and because we've used up just two, we're only getting two back and the square's still there because it's still got one of them in there. I've ended up going into it because we've got a uh, Milwaukee who needs to be leveled up. And I was fairly confident at this point that I wouldn't be causing too much damage to my fleet if I did that. So... And there's the explosive ships again. I was trying to dodge them with my main escort fleet or whatever you want to call them. But that did mean that my back fleet got the full blast of them but because they've still got quite a lot of health it's not much of an issue at this stage and not causing too much damage at this point. In later maps it does cause a problem so you, it's something to watch out for as you get through later maps. Okay, it's drops us out of this automatically because it's telling us we've now got access to the backyard. The backyard is where you can level up ships without needing to engage them into maps. So it's telling us which ship to put in there. Obviously I don't want to be putting that ship in there <laughs> because She's already got the highest level at the moment, and so what I want is Naraki and what the others. So I thought about putting Cuba in there, but ideally I want Laffy in there because while she's also got a high enough level, she's actually a destroyer, which means she's generally kind of fragile. So because it got me to put in food, I've got the reward for food, so I can now put in a bit more food. So I'm going to put in quite a bit here. That's the daily quest that gives you a bunch of extra of those drinks. Now we can purchase this using fuel, so just buy 10 for now. And the nice thing about this is this food gives you a status buff as well, so for a limited period of time it improves the experience gained by an extra percentage. But as I said in my other video, the amount of experience they get, they get in there is not very high, especially in that room because it's got no decorations at all, or rather it's the basic, you're poor and they're living in squalor. So they're getting no happiness boosts at all, they've got zero 
happiness at the moment in that room as such it's not going to do much for their experience boosting Okay, so one thing I started noticing at this point is that uh, Laffy is actually taking quite a bit of damage. Because what I forgot to do is put Laffy in my third slot and put Kent in the first slot. Because Kent's got the most armor and she's got the most health. And also at the moment she's also the highest level, so you know, you want her tanking for your fleet. So what you'll see me do the most here is drawing back quite a lot. So Kent is gonna get the brunt of the attacks. So yeah, as soon as they start to attack and far and stuff. I will pull back as you see, so that Mafi doesn't take much damage. Okay, so we've got Akagi and Kaga. Normally I wouldn't have recommended going into this map with a fleet that's at this kind of level but because I've played this game a few times I'm doing it to show you what the maps look like and how to do it and what you can do to transfer if you noticed Happy's <laughs> kind of like only just survived so yeah try and blast the boss down using your attacks your um, special attacks and you know keep your fleet in a retreating pose if your flagship if your first ship is in major damage so here i am switching their positions so you basically you just grab one and then drag it to the other position and that will switch them over now as you see, that's as much health and uh, stuff that Kent's got, so she is superior in terms of tanking ability. The other thing about collecting your ships, because we've been getting quite a few drops, is that it fills out this area. And as it fills out more, you will get the various rewards because if you look at the area on the right those are the rewards that you get and uh, it's something Kai briefly mentioned in the other video but you can see it a bit more in action there it's really worth collecting those ships just because of the benefits of some of the rewards you get not only can you get some nice rare ships from doing it, but um, you can get a few extra skills apparently. So, okay, so now I've got Kent in the first position, so things should go a lot easier. The advantage of having Kent in the first position is that because she is, I believe, level 10 at this point, she's either level 10 or level 11, or I'll just have a quick look. Yeah, she's level 10. That uh, puts her on par with the boss at the end. 
and that's a very desirable thing on this map because if you are starting this new I don't really recommend going into this map unless you've got your ships that are level 10 or not especially if you have ships that aren't of a rare status or super rare if you haven't got rare, super rare or very rare and you've only got the normal ones which are the great ones level up those ones on the other maps get them to at least level 10 probably level 11 so that they can do really well and then do what you can do in the boss fight but on these first maps as long as you evade most of the damage having level parity isn't as important as it is later on I mean it definitely helps especially if you're kind of new it definitely definitely helps I mean in later maps it helps quite a lot if you're of a consistently higher level than the fleets that you're going to face and I don't know if you noticed there but because I'd used up three pieces of ammunition before going into the ammunition square once I grabbed the three pieces of ammunition the gold highlight around the square then vanished in much the same way as the square with the question mark then vanishes once you've entered it because um, last time when I only used up or claimed two pieces of the ammo the square remained there but this time it's now gone So here we are, because we have to do this battle twice, this is the last dance of doing it. So we're hitting them with everything we've got to try and take them down quickly, which we managed to do. Right, here's the cutscene. So there they are. Makagi Kaga and in the background you can just about see who you Lexington and York Town. I do like this bit. So there you are, Corsi. So that's the first world all completed. It's now told us that we can put in our second fleet because on the second world we can use our second fleet but because we've not got any more battleships and carriers it's not really helpful at this point so we're gonna have to try and craft some more at some other point now we're claiming our reward we've got a universal volume 
this allows you to limit break your ships. So I can actually do another gacha gacha. <laughs> and pretty much worthless because I've already got her. Now at this point I could use the duplicates to upgrade the other ships by, well, strengthen the other ships, but I like to, at the first bit up to level 30, hold on to one extra ship and that way as they level up to level 30, because as soon as they get to level 10 you can do, perform a limit break. Okay, so I'm upgrading Kent's torpedo tube to the one that I've just ended up getting here. Um, even though it's going to take a lot longer to fire because of the reload time, it does improve my torpedo stat and it's a much more powerful use. So it's a case of trying to balance that off the benefits of um, the impact of using it against the reload, reload times. So as you can see I've got a couple of ships that are above level 10. I've got Kent and Long Island. But I haven't got any duplicates for them, I've only got this. And while well, I could use her to upgrade or rather limit break Kent or Long Island through this method here, as you can see, it's not showing up because she's at the moment locked the invisible unit. I'm just not going to. And on the side there, you can see the stats that improve and it will preview the abilities so while it is nice to improve them I'm going to wait until I get a couple more of the the Universal Williams because they do start to come thick and fast after a while So, go back into the academy, claim the new fuel and oil. As you can see, we can upgrade it again. So, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so. Going back into the map, you can see that we've got the Daily Raid unlocked. This one here gives us the drop boxes as a reward as well as money. But because you, well it starts at level 10, I don't recommend doing it. Because it's going to be quite hard to do, especially at this stage. The fleet's not going to be strong enough to do it, and it's just going to be a real nightmare to try and do it, especially if you're starting out. I'm going to do it just to show you exactly what I mean. So, this one we will face waves of these enemies. We're going to face three waves where it's going to be two singles and then one pair of them and they're both basically like bosses so we do have a lot of health to get through So 
I thought I tried to dodge that. I was still ended up getting hit by it. I try and dodge the red circles on the ground because that's where she's targeting. It also doesn't help if you're trying to take her down. As you can see right now, we're now in a real perilous state. So, airstrike, cannons, just throw everything at them, try to survive, try to evade. I've got nothing caught at the moment. Um, you notice that the yellow circles, as I said, I think I said it before, they used to feel when it's actually ready to use. So, did manage to do it, did manage to keep the entire fleet up, but it was very close to thing. And that is why I don't recommend doing it. <laughs> So wait until you've got a fleet that's about level 15 or so before attempting it. Otherwise it's going to be a real pain. Okay, that's that for now. We'll uh, pick it up later. Hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it's uh, been helpful and I'll uh, see you all soon, bye!